Let's turn our attention toward the topic of uh, COVID-19 and the guy who's been with us every step of the way since this whole pandemic thing got rolling well over a year, year and a half ago. Mm. And that's our good friend, Dr. Dennis Norum from Mercy Health, taking time out of his busy day once again. Dr. Norum, good morning to you. Good morning to you guys. How's everything going with you? I'm doing well, trying to get used to a new phone. Oh, <laughs> Congratulations, by the way. <laughs> That'll be about 10 days worth of whoops. Um, I'm not sure what I'm doing here, or maybe that's just me. Are, 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 you, one, are you one of the people that uh, upgrades your phone every every year or two, or did you have something from uh, the mid-aughts in, in your pocket? Uh, I, I think I had something from the last century. I okay. had my, <laughs> my iPhone 6 yesterday. Ooh, that is old. Okay. That's good. <laughs> a year ago, bag phone went by the wayside. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Moving, moving right along. Well, yeah, we, we've all been there. Well, and, uh, and we wish you well in, in, in getting through all of this. Good luck remembering your passwords. Yeah, there's that, yeah. too. There's that, too. Lots of uh, different things to talk about on the uh, topic of COVID-19, including Illinois gearing for a full open, opening up. What are your thoughts? Oh, absolutely. I mean, this is what uh, we've all been, uh, I think, anxiously waiting for to see this opening. Now there are some caveats with it in that uh, uh, there's still going to be mask requirements, as you uh, summarized on the news, healthcare facilities, uh, buses, trains, traveling, those kinds of things. But we're supposed to lift all the capacity limits and uh, people should be able to go out and do the things they want to do. But we're still not where we need to be on vaccinations. That's my concern. And in that vein, I uh, see there was a little blurb in the news that uh, a restaurant over in Marengo had a little outbreak, what, a couple weeks ago. And they had, uh, they had recommended some quarantine some people. So, you know, there are enough people out there that aren't vaccinated. We're going to see those kind of little episodes pop up here and there. So please get vaccinated. And if when we see those uh, popping up, is that going to be the, the impetus to get more people vaccinated? I, I just feel like we've kind of hit a wall here on, on the vaccinations and getting to that. Uh, what, what was the magic number we want to get to? 70 percent? We're still saying 70 percent. Um, I believe what I saw is in Illinois, the adults were a little over 50 percent fully vaccinated, maybe 60 percent with one shot. Obviously, we don't have the kids there yet because that was just approved for Pfizer and Moderna will probably get their approval for 12 and up. So we still have a little ways to go. But if we could get to that 70 percent fully vaccinated, we could probably avoid uh, any of these little uh, uh, episodes where groups of people will end up being positive. But uh, it, uh, it still remains to be seen. So if, if, if we do get to 70%, I mean, will we go back to normal, 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 like no more even talking about masks if we go to the doctor's office? Or or is that, or is that just part of it for, for the long haul? Because, I mean, if it's just busting now or, or preventing small outbreaks in Marengo here and there, I don't know if that's enough of an impetus to get people vaccinated. Uh, I don't know either. Um and then we get into the issue of how long does immunity last? Do we need booster shots? Are we going to see this as a seasonal thing? If we do see a seasonal uptick, are we going to have to go back uh, to mitigation with masking and distancing? Uh, I think that all remains to be seen. We just don't quite know yet where that's going to be. But I think we should look on the positive and say, hey, look where we're getting. We're finally getting to uh, a point where we can see that the uh, uh, pan epidemic here, at least in the United States, seems to be under some reasonable control, and we can start to function more normally. Looking at a piece the, uh, the Associated Press put up uh, over the weekend uh, with a headline reading, Heart Reaction Probe is Possible Rare Vaccine Link in Teens, and it goes on to point out that health authorities are trying to determine whether heart inflammation that can occur with many types of infections could also be a rare side effect in teens and young adults after the second dose of COVID-19 vaccination. Article on seven U.S. teen boys in several states published online Friday in uh, pediatrics is among the latest reports of heart inflammation discovered after COVID-19 vaccination, though a link to the vaccine has not yet been proven. Yeah, I think this is analogous to what we saw with uh, some of the other side effect issues. 
uh, it takes a lot of work to try to figure out if there's really cause and effect. Clearly, there was a little bit of an association, but again, everybody that's being vaccinated, I think we're very sensitive to look for side effects. Uh, one of the requirements is we don't give other vaccines within two weeks of the COVID vaccines, just so we don't confuse side effects. And clearly, they're picking up a few kids with this inflammation of the heart, but is it really cause and effect or is it just coincidence because we're so sensitive about looking for these side effects? You mentioned uh, earlier about uh, uh, may maybe booster shots uh, coming up. When will we know? Because we're what? When do we start vaccinations? February? Jan it was not until 2021, right? Right. So, very it, pardon? Yeah, very early 2021, if I remember correctly. I think so, I got my shot in early February. So, so, so if if it's a, if it's an annual booster that uh, that maybe maybe we'll need, will that be c coming around in February, or do we have do we have the technology in us to get that turned around so quick? We start thinking about a booster, you know, next month, something like that. Where when will we know if we need to get another thing, another booster? I don't think we're going to know that until probably sometime this fall. I think it's going to take another certain uh, several more months. Uh, the most recent article I saw on immunity suggests that the immunity is good for at least a year. But we've only really had a year to study it, so it's going to take a little more study. Uh, one of the issues that's come up is we know that the antibodies tend to disappear maybe as early as three months in some people, may last as long as six months, but the immunity lasts much longer than what the antibodies show. So it's going to take a little more time and testing to tell how long is the immunity going to last. When, when does that mean, you know, um, having the antibodies, the difference between having the antibodies and, and being immune, the antibodies, so if I've got, I've got the vaccination, I have antibodies in me right now, uh, but if they go away, my immunity would allow me to create more antibodies if, if the virus became present in my body. Is that how it works? Yes, basically that's how it works. Your B cells uh, and you have B-cells and T-cell lymphocytes. Uh, the T-cells are we call tissue immunity, uh, which attacks uh, invaders in the body through certain uh, cells and tissue. The B-cells produce antibody. In some viral infections, those antibodies persist lifetime. Uh, you know, measles, mumps, rubella, you could measure your antibody titers virtually your whole life and see that they're still present. Other types of infections and viruses, the antibodies disappear, but the B cells have memory. They remember that they've already seen that uh, virus and they can make the antibodies very quickly if they are again exposed to that virus. So we think that that shows that the immunity can last much longer than the disappearance of the actual antibody. Which will go over better with the public, uh, you know, thinking, well, I, I was just vaccinated in March and uh, now here, now I'm in August and I'm supposed to go back again. Yes. At the end of the day, we still need, obviously, the clinical studies to show. I mean, it's fine to measure antibodies and tissue immunity and all that good stuff. But at the end of the day, we, we need to see how all of us respond to being exposed again to the uh, coronavirus. And at what point are we going to need boosters? And I don't think anybody's quite figured that out yet, but certainly that is going to be a huge issue moving forward. Along the lines of not seemingly uh, figuring things out yet or still trying to figure out as we go along, another uh, Associated Press story saying uh, most vaccinated California workers must keep their masks on. Regulators approved a controversial rule on uh, Thursday night of last week. Uh, that allows the workers to go maskless, but only if every employee in a room is fully vaccinated against the coronavirus. Uh, I guess I would struggle with that. I kind of gotten to the point where if you have the opportunity to get vaccinated, which every adult does, and if you're vaccinated as I am, the person that's not vaccinated is really of no risk to me or extremely low risk. What is a risk is to themselves. And I guess if they want to take that risk, that's their problem. Um, but um, I don't quite understand why they have to require masks in that setting. 
you know, this is one of the things I think the public scratches their heads over. And, and, and this is, and I'm not saying this as an attack, but I, I, I saw this over the weekend. I saw Dr. Fauci was at some uh, appearance over the weekend, fully masked. And, you know, he was one of the first people to become vaccinated against COVID-19 and uh, has basically become the face of the advice the American people are supposed to look toward. Uh, what does that say? Well, what? What uh, was the uh, venue that he was in? Um, Honestly, oh. I'm looking. I think it was a food bank. I'm not sure. You know, again, and I've struggled with this as things have changed. As I take my mask with me and I look at the door, if I'm going into a, a, a store or whatever, and to see if there still is a sign. I mean, I don't think I need to be masked, but, you know, just to be a good steward, if the sign says you must wear a mask, then I'll put my mask on. Um, and again, just remind people, there's still requirements on you know, transit buses, planes, uh, healthcare facilities, we are still masking. So I, I think it, it's uh, one of those situations where until we get a little more comfortable, you know, you need to comply with whatever the rules of the facility you're going in. Um, we, we've talked a couple times about the uh, um, some of the unintended positives that uh, might come out of uh, the, the recent pandemic, and, and one of them I was reading the other day. And maybe this is one of those questions. Will you yell at me? And I, I'm not a virologist. Uh, find somebody. I know. say that to you all the time. <laughs> I, I know you do. I know you do. But uh, the plug and play aspect of of this mR, mRNA, uh, you know, vaccine development um, that we kind of figured out. That's how we got this vaccine out so quick. Uh, it, we reuse this plug and play. That's the word I kept reading in articles about developing other vaccines down the road. Will this help us fight, you know, uh, numerous other viruses in the next couple of decades that might pop up? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. This technology is uh, an incredible improvement over what we've had in the past. Uh, there was just an announcement that they're starting a study on uh, a flu vaccine that could be... Uh, long term could last for several years instead of the traditional flu vaccine that we have now and, and I'm almost certain that's a MRA messenger MRA uh, MRA excuse me uh, technology the other thing that's interesting about this technology is not just viruses it's being used in cancer um, uh, there's several ongoing studies of different types of cancer that they're doing messenger RNA vaccines that uh, could be used to treat cancer. So we could, we could get a, a more effective flu vaccine out of this and a, and a cancer vaccine, which I never heard those two words put together before. Yes, there's been a lot of interest in cancer vaccines, and I believe there was one approved uh, a few years ago, but it, it was so expensive and it was never, it never really got to any wide-term treatment. I think it was for prostate cancer, of all things. Uh, so there's been a lot of interest in vaccines. The idea that well, if we can stimulate our immune system to knock out viruses and bacteria, why can't we stimulate our immune systems to knock out cancer cells? When in fact, our immune systems, when we are working efficiently, do knock out cancer cells uh, during our lifetime. So there's a lot of interest in that. Yeah, and, and this is one of these things like with the space program, when the space program went up, it, it, we had no idea of the side benefits that would all of a sudden come back to, from, uh, you know, a trip to the moon and all that, that uh, would, would revolutionize the way what we cooked, uh, the, 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 the way we made things, uh, uh, different substances that were put together simply for space flight that became part and parcel of everyday American life. Maybe everything we ratcheted up as far as a response to covid all of these other little things that we didn't realize will come down the line to be a benefit. Yeah, I think that's a good point. And uh, I think the, the thing that's been most uh, exciting, I think, to me is the fact that, yes, they were able to ramp this up very quickly, but look how safe it's been. You know, we talked at the beginning, the concern about what if we came up with some serious side effects and then people would not get vaccines. The messenger RNA vaccines have been extremely safe. There just hasn't been any evidence that uh, that there's been a serious side effect. I mean, we're always looking. 
We're always looking to see maybe there's something, maybe there's something. We've given 300 million doses in this country. How many people have died from complications of the messenger RNA vaccines? I'm not aware of anybody. Mm -hmm. It's, It's worked out pretty good. Yeah, it's worked out probably as well as one could have ever expected. Well, and especially when you consider what uh, the naysayers were saying when the whole thought that, you know, within less than a year, we'll come up with something. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's not yeah. possible. Oh, that's going to that'll be five years down the line. I can remember a, a, a noted medical uh, advisor or whatever on TV. It'll be five years. You mark my words, that person said. I know I haven't seen them on TV a whole lot since then. Right. But at the time, it was yeah, it was going to be five years minimum, and uh, here we are in uh, what nine months less than. Um, let's see, we're probably from the kickoff at, of warp speed to the point we started putting in people's arms. A little bit over a year, yeah, okay, which is incredible. And then there was the concern again. We're talking about is the safety concern. Well, so well, if we do this, you know, it's not going to be safe. Something terrible is going to happen. You know, people are going to. Uh, 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 have their genetic material altered and blah, blah, blah. There was all that stuff, and none of it's turned out to be true. It's been an extremely safe vaccine. And that's where we stand, and uh, Illinois is uh, is a beneficiary of it as we uh, start to uh, really whip things open toward the tail end of the week. Dr. Norm, as always, we appreciate the time. We appreciate the expertise. I don't think we're out of the woods yet, so if you got a few more of these visits uh, left in you, we would, uh, we would welcome them. Well, we'll keep at it, guys. We appreciate it. There's Dr. Dennis Norm from Mercy Health.